Hey, Myth. Hey, Rick. In the past, uh huh. How have you uh, generally thought of fortress stages? Oh, I've hated them. That's not what I'm looking for. Like, so convoluted, very difficult platforming, like spikes all over the goddamn place. Not just X6. Like convoluted, difficult pra- platforming that makes you practice all the shit that you've learned throughout the entire game. That's a little better. You're still ruining what I'm going for. Uh, you need to tell me what you're going for. Like, look at all this shit. Like actual final challenges, basically. Tough, difficult. Yeah, but also like well put together. Well, I expect that from the X game in general. So we got Palace Road. Uh, and that's you've, Palace Road! Yeah, you've literally already seen the entirety of Palace Road, so I'm just gonna through my book while maybe Myth asks some maybe questions. Isn't this supposed to be the thing from Armored Armadillo's stage? I think it is supposed to be a giant version of it. Maybe there is a note in here? If it is, it's going to be farther back in the books. So bear with me a second. Yeah, so, there's like, fucking no threat here. Like, X could literally just hug the wall, and in theory, it should bypass him entirely. So, er, yeah, well, yeah, okay, logic-wise, you're not wrong. Um, so you can't hurt it right now, at all. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's completely invulnerable, which is ridiculous because it's not. Like, it's just present. And this is the exact same thing that the uh, intro stage boss did, too, is it's just present on the screen, chasing you. I actually just realized that. It is literally the same as the intro stage boss. Yep. It's just present, chasing you, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's trying to wear you down, except this time, instead of being for, like, 30 seconds, it's individual loading zones of literally just the same thing. Like, you teleport, and it is still right behind you this whole time. Also, that skybox. The, the what skybox? It's exactly. Sprout. Yeah. It's like but Sandy This box. is like the fucking whale boat, but less interactive. And somehow slower, with just a worse, just all of its worse. Every part. Um, there's not really good enemy variety, but this game doesn't really have that to begin with. And not that you have the time to fight any of the enemies. And, just... and the biggest threat is your lethargy through this whole thing. So, when I was going through these originally, practicing, I think maybe even during the irregular run, I, I forget, honestly. Um, one of the biggest threats in this fight is you're just, you're walking. You don't even really need to dash, and you might dash a little bit just because it will catch up to you. Not that you need to worry about taking damage as X the way we've been playing. And because the camera's so pulled up, you can just walk straight off of those fucking things. So the challenge is just that it isn't gonna bother showing you where bottomless pits might be, and a lot of it is kind of pattern words like this one was on the right, so the next one's gonna be on the left, so just zigzag. But that doesn't really change the fact that it's just this. It's just this level. And then the thing just drives straight over a fucking pit? Yeah. I hate, I hate everything about this stage. Literally everything. Got those giant tank things that for some reason hurt you. I don't know why. Sometimes they move side to side. Because they're present and we just couldn't, we couldn't think of anything. And so this is just cycling back into what I was asking you that you failed to answer at the start is... An intro, or uh, the intro to a fortress run in an X game, even in X6, is supposed to be like, all right, you know, the stakes are really high. This is plot significant in some way. You're like infiltrating the fortress, or you're, you know, escaping something, or you're doing something. something. This is quote unquote palace road, and it isn't. You don't even see a fortress at the end of this segment. It's just like. Here's a highway. Like, this is basically the X1 intro stage, except worse. Also, so, there's item placements. So, yeah, those item placements suck. The first time I went through this, I missed those. Second, if you pick that up, it's a full heal, which means all of the damage that you've been accruing over time is just pointless. And which means now you attack this fucker. Yeah, there's not even a transformation. So this entire level is literally pointless. Just entirely. So also, why the fuck do the underground illicit bounty hunters have a fucking palace with their own highway? Or this thing that's just apparently in their forces. Also, so, it's weak, weak. Actually is kind of weak to, uh, Explosion. Uh, Explosion, unfortunately enough, is actually one of the few weakness weapons in this game that actually does damage, does damage that's worth a damn against what it's weak to. Um, I forget if you can do it with the buster, but Explosion will also basically instantly wipe out 
the roller part mm. on the front so that the attack patterns actually change up. I do know that that happens without using it, though, because I'm pretty sure it ends up in this state in the irregular video, too, and I don't use any weapons in the irregular videos, basically. Right. I think this just does it way faster, so I guess there's your pro tip. In the I meantime... the dude just ran you over with no... Yeah, it's supposed to be like, no shit, and then just, like... You can see underneath the highway in the background, there's just so much wrong. So, there would be a stage select there again, but we're not going to subjugate you watching Sigma's head disc get put into place. I mean, the professor, what was I thinking? No, you're... No, yeah, you're right. Shit. Yeah, no, it's still not revealed. Because that was an entire level back there. We're, uh... Yeah, that was stage one of, of the palaces. And the worst part about this now is that this is stage two, and this level is just the end. Yep. So the rest of this video runtime, aside from, like, closing cutscenes and credits, is one fortress stage, mm -hmm. technically. The, the rest of the entire series, two more episodes in this one level. Oh, yeah, shit, there's more. Yeah. This. I forgot that this isn't actually the last level. And, yeah, no, so... It's still the last level. You don't go back to level select at any yeah, point. Yeah, so what's terrible about that is you can go from here all the way to Sigma, and if you don't save and game over or something, you're just wiped entirely, and it goes right to bosses and shit like that. So we're about to fight Red, and this is just... So just terrible. Took you so long. It's like Gates fight, but worse in every conceivable way. I guess with the exception of platform removal. He at least doesn't yeah. do that. But we well, like not the way you fight him. No, no, we'll go over it when it's actually fighting. So we're actually getting more explanation on the, the professor. The professor. Fucking Frankenstein ass motherfucker. Probably closer than we think. And I like that Gosh, Red isn't even really evil. But, yeah, like well, evil or attacked him. He's just like, oh, proud. I got outvoted, I guess. Maybe I'm being threatened. It's not really clear. Fuck it, let's fight. But no, son. we need to rescue Red. Red. Okay, so this is this is Red's fight. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that the room isn't actually designed like. Very similarly to Gate's room, there's not really a layout. There's just platforms that got put places. But I want you to remember this whole room layout just for after the fight. Really important. Also, where the fuck are we? Uh, you're in the palace. You see, you went up the ramps with the cyber boulders and then went through the teleporter, and now you're, um... Uh, uh, like, hot spring? It's like the... It looks so like a Mortal Kombat stage. It does! I was gonna say it reminds me of the, um, Conductor's Poison Spring in, uh, Majora's Mask in Iconic. Oh, yeah. That you have to, like, purify. Yeah, yeah, Just, yeah. like, it isn't actually a place. Yeah, what the fuck is this Roman world full of bullshit? And, uh, this'll now, spoilers, become kind of a recurring thing, so be prepared for that. So, Red does some annoying stuff. Um, there's those attacks, which, you know, naturally, if you're on the platforms, when those come up, you'll take damage. I think you've got a little bit of time to react, so you'll see that they're coming up and they won't damage you right away. I think it's right when they become a column versus just a floor thing. Um, and then he'll also do those double clones, which sometimes go onto multiple platforms, but are usually focused on one. The goal is to fight the real Red, who, um you have to, you know, aim assist on two. And because that this is, like, a 3D environment, which, first of all, just everything about that is terrible just throughout the whole game, um, you have to steer your awkward-ass camera around to actually see him if he comes up behind you. So aim assist won't actually assist your aim unless you're already aiming at him, which I guess works towards it being an aim assist, but it isn't supposed to be that. It's supposed to be a lock-on, so at least give me something to work with orient the character and then make it so that I have to orient my vision in response to the character, that'll make it flow a little bit better with what you presented me with. Now, you have all of that stacked on top of the fact that 90% of the time when Red is doing these attacks, he's just invulnerable for no reason. Like, if he's doing that tornado move like he was just doing, you can't attack him. I'm pretty sure the only time you can actually attack Red is right before and right after he shoots one of those crescent projectiles at you, which... Why? That doesn't enhance any difficulty or anything, it's just a pain. And if he decides to do that part of his random attack pattern, and he's like all the way at the other end of the arena that you're not facing, you don't have enough time to actually react and get over to him. 
and you can't just dumb fire across the room like you could with a 2D stage, because you have to aim assist onto him, so it's just all working against you for also, you have no reason. Limitations. Also, yeah, I exactly. look at the near clip plane of the camera keeps clipping through the fucking fog every time you turn your camera. Just, I see it every time, and it bugs the shit out of me. Yeah, so like right there, yeah. you can see just like jagged bullshit going on. This is a god awful game. Yeah, it's this really is kind of like the definition of X7, I think, is this boss fight. Because, don't get me wrong, there's other stuff coming that's still pretty terrible, like the final bass, or, wow, final battle, final boss, combine those. Final, hey, bass. Uh, is, is is all, yeah, just all of it is really bad. And this, I think, is just the poster child for it because it's showing off everything that's wrong with the game. It's got the bad pacing, it has the bad camera controls, the visuals are off, the characters seem disinterested, the story around it doesn't make any sense. The boss has way more health than it right makes. Well, that's part of the pacing, but yeah, like, it's just, it's all incorrect, and this fight is it. It's just all of it put together. And at the very least, I guess at least it isn't savagely over damaging or anything, but that's only because we went out of our way to max X out. Like, I can't picture doing this fight with zero. I don't know how you would do it. Yeah, and Axel's damage output is laughable. Even with the two damage buffs, he still doesn't seem to be that great. And bear in mind that X is the tank in this one when I built him the way that we have, which I mean, you know, just full power, and he's still taking pretty sizable damage from some of these attacks, which makes sense from an endgame boss, but in this particular, like, series of events, it's just irritating. Like, it's, it doesn't feel like I'm overcoming any good odds, and it's also really slow. Yep. Like, with Gates' fight, at least you're constantly Doing bouncing stuff. all over the yeah. room and he's pursuing you, and this one's just like... All right, there's a set timer. Red's gonna go somewhere else. Maybe I'll be able to damage him. Where the fuck are we now? Yeah, completely different environment now. And referring to Axel as if he's the one that did any of the fighting. And bear in mind, that these are always the same no matter who your team is. This place is done for. Why? We're in this stage for the rest of the game. Yeah, there's also that. So right now he's talking about, you know, self-destruct. Emergency and all that, and that never comes up again. No, guys, we gotta save Red. It's real important. Come on, you can still make it. You literally can. Nothing is happening right now. Or we'll be buried here too. Nothing is burying you. <laughs> Damn it! Axel, he's right. He's right. It's my time. Let, let me go. First. You're a robot. You just. They're... You, mm. In the meantime, since this is just frustrating, let's talk a little bit about... How many times about... has Zero fucking died in this series? Let's talk a little bit about Axel. The only design work I did for X7, this is Inafune talking, was to give advice on Axel. I said, if we're bringing in a new character, just make sure you give him a distinct silhouette. Over the years, I came to realize that when you draw robotic characters, it's mighty easy for them to fall into similar shapes. That's why I was very careful about X and Zero silhouettes when I was designing them. Axel ended up with protrusions from his head and a gun in his hand to make him more unique. Which works. I actually like Axel's design. But speaking of design, hey, stage design! That enemy? You don't know he's there. And that's just the rest of this level, is just these enemies and those lasers. And you will see multiple times... Well, that's not the rest of the level. There's also yeah, the there's, cyber heads. There's other stuff. Just, so there's going to be a lot of instances where you're going to be scrolling on screen or moving from point A to point B, and those things are just gonna be there. Shooting fire at you that gotta help you if you don't have all of the damage reduction power-ups, you're just gonna take damage. Like right here is another one. You can't duck under that fire, even though you can duck. Showed it off right there. This one is gonna do the same thing. Like, you are going to get on this moving platform, which you're supposed to do, and then just ride forward slowly and carefully. And you'd assume that that'd be fine, but here's another goddamn flamethrower coming, and it's not like you can do anything about that. Like, I'm sure if you really wanted to go out of your way to memorize everything, you could glide home over him at the right time, but just, that isn't a fortress challenge. That's just being a bad game designer. And this is speaking over X6's fortress designs, and 
if you want to compare them, X6's fortresses are definitely more dangerous, but at least you can usually see what's going to be doing things to you. This one just has shit pop in, in random spots that you really can't do anything about. And a lot of its design in this game is just throw shit everywhere. Who yeah. the fuck cares? It doesn't matter. So this section is particularly nerve-wracking because of, remember, the Jetsons pillars will knock you uh, off. But there's also invisible walls along these platforms that you can sometimes go over and sometimes can't. I don't know if it's a walking thing versus a jumping thing because of the little teeth coming off the side, but that mixed with the knockback, mixed with the tank enemies, mixed with the fact that the camera is rotating itself a lot of the time here. Like, I'm doing some of it, but it's orienting itself to, like, quote-unquote keep you on track, and it becomes this really nerve-wracking exercise in, like, what's going to happen if I try to move anywhere? Like, the only reason I'm not advancing aggressively like I normally would right now, despite how tanky I am, is because I don't know if something's just gonna drop me into that bottomless pit and make me start all over again. So, it's just like, this doesn't feel like a level, this doesn't feel like 3D platforming, it's just like they took a bunch of assets out of a bucket and just tossed them on the screen, and wherever they landed, that's the stage. Good job, can you make the jump? Alright, good enough, don't worry about it. And then more of it's popping in as we're going. Luckily, at this point, there's no more knockdown stuff, so I can just glide past, not taking any damage, even though I clipped through the enemy, because fuck it, it's just the final stage. We don't need to make that any good at all. Also, I'm pretty convinced that the branching teleporters you're seeing take you to the same place, but it's so samey looking that I can't tell if I've gone through the left or right teleporters before. Yeah, um, I, I've seen, these are the only stages I've seen for this, and I'm almost positive that I've gone through both teleporters, so I think those are just like an illusion or something. I don't know. Uh, you could check the regular one, maybe, but honestly, it's X7. Why am I range limited? I don't understand that. Because I it's shouldn't be. 3D. I can't let you shoot off and hit the enemies that don't spawn in until you're close. But that's not a spawn in thing. That's like he's just literally there. It's like, nope, it's good to react when you walk up, so you have to deal with it. But then this one doesn't do shit. So just give me range. It's just, it's so. Un all of it's unnecessary. Also, you walk through, but then you teleport in. Like, that's not even... Just put a door on the other side! There's a wall for a door right there. No, man, our, we only have the one spawn animation. It's literally walking. So, this part bothers me in particular, because at the very least, this is how these fire dogs should be getting introduced. I talked to you yeah. about this when I was actually playing it, is you're walking up ramps, which means if you're going slowly and carefully, you're being introduced to the non-aiming straight-fire flamethrowers in a way that isn't immediately going to damage you if you don't know that you're th they're there. It's just, it's kind of like the Hammer Joes in the classic games, where they're introduced in a way where you will always see them throw one of their projectiles before you are in danger of being hit by one, no matter what level you're starting on. This is that, except it's coming after you've already been blindsided by them a whole bunch. So it's just, swap them. And then these, this is ridiculous. So in Stone Kong stage, you're taught to use these as platforms or destroy them. In this stage, you can't touch them without taking damage, and they're indestructible, and they have spikes, which are taught are instant kill, that don't kill you instantly. You know, the spikes are best to indicate that these ones hurt you. And this one, like, there are just ones here that... What? What do you do? What are you supposed to do here without taking damage? Are you expected to short hop and glide across, or short hop and air dash? Are you supposed to tank the damage? Is there a weakness weapon that does destroy them that I'm just not seeing because I've been taught that the weakness weapons are worthless? Like, all of this is just... They, they gave up, and it shows that they gave up. And, like, you can still fucking wall jump on these things. They, they just, just damage you. And then you clip right through them. So there's not even good hit detection on them. And then there's this one that, like, you have to... There must be some way to destroy them. I must just not have checked the weapons. Because I can't think of a single other thing. And it's not like the glide armor has any kind of spike prevention. There isn't a Gaia armor or a shadow armor in this. This actually doesn't even have the ultimate armor. This is the first game since X4 to not include a variation of the ultimate armor. 
And it's also the last one to not include it, because X8 and Command Mission both have versions of it. Not counting a regular Hunter X, obviously. Uh, I think this is a regular stone hit. But the rest of this stage has taught me to avoid them. And the only indication that it would be a bad evil stone head is on the back of its fucking head, which you can't see. So that is not only a leap of faith, but it's a leap of faith that's directing you into what you assume is an enemy. So it's not even a leap of faith where, alright, maybe there's a platform over there, it's, alright, I'm going to take damage from what I'm jumping at. 